Um, let's go ahead and move on over to uh, Mass Effect. Who who here has played the uh, Legendary Edition? Sarah and I. It me. Oh, you have also. Yep. Nice. Uh, uh, out of curious curiosity, what platform is everyone playing on? PlayStation Five. Xbox. And I guess PC here. So we have we have the full table here. Can I can I just say it is still so weird to me seeing Mass Effect playable on a Sony console? Because like, oh, like I because <laughs> like one and two launched like exclusively on Xbox, and I think it was like a year after on both of those it came to PC. Didn't they and release so, so, the trilogy on PS3 eventually? They it, did. It, they yeah, like put they it did. in this nice fancy collection that had like when a it, nice cover case on it. When the series first came to PS3, <laughs> it was only two at first. And so so you couldn't play Mass Effect 1, so there was like a there was a comic, a digital comic spe- that they specifically made for that PS3 version where you can go through and like make some of the decisions that you would have otherwise made in Mass Effect 1. Um it was actually pretty cool. But yeah, every time I see like a Mass Effect uh, gameplay or screenshot, I see like the the PlayStation buttons. I'm, like, there's just a reptile part of my brain that's just like that isn't right. <laughs> um, but that's uh, actually what, what what drove my decision to get it on Xbox, honestly, because <laughs> <laughs> my brain is so hardwired to playing it on there. I I can't divorce my idiot brain from that. Yeah. I, uh, I the same thing happened to me with um, the Spyro Reignited trilogy. Where I'm just like I can. Oh, my Xbox is quieter. And I have a PC that could run it at sixty. I'm just like, but it would feel so fucking wrong to play to not play Spyro on on a PlayStation for me. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta press that X button, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Roman, you want to go and give your thoughts overall on the Legendary Edition? I will be right back. Yeah, I, if I may say, Mass Effect 1 has not aged well to me. <laughs> no, it hasn't. Oh my god, <laughs> it, it is painful. You can tell that they built it off the bones of Knights of the Old Republic. That's that's kind of the, the feeling that I get, because I forgot that when you're shooting bullets, you're still rolling a dice. You know, it's not yeah, an actual... Yeah, I noticed that too. Like, yep. I'll fire at something, and hitting a gas, like, head on... And I only do like a little bit of damage, and I'm like, "Yep." I'm like, "I upgraded this. Like, this is upgraded pretty good." Exactly. Yeah, and bless them for going the more action route in two and three. But I'm like, I love one. It, it's my nostalgia brain speaking, but it's technically my favorite. But my God, I want it to be over with so soon so I can it's, get to two. <laughs> yeah, um, I. I I hit this spot in it last last night where it was like find this elevator and I was looking up a guide it's like oh it's between this area and this area and I'm in between that area and I'm like where the fuck's the elevator and it's like oh no no it's in between before the elevator before the elevator and I'm like <laughs> I'm like what the fuck design is this I'm like, yep. oh, who would do this? And then I get there, and I'm like, <sighs> um, I, I know at can least I just for me, now so I can leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know no. uh, at least for me, I've I've only played the uh, the first mission like before we started um, getting ready and whatnot, and just like yeah, overall presentation wise, like yeah, they they put new character models. It's not uh, early 360 potato face status, uh, which is nice. <laughs> Whatever. Um, but it like all all the, the jank Bioware's still feels fair. there. It's, yeah, it still feels off. Um, the, the the combat doesn't feel great. Like I, typically, Mass Effect two and three, I love playing those on the hardest difficulty because it turns into like a really nice tactical shooter where you're having to like yep. manage everyone's skills using uh, specific weaknesses against like armor barriers and shields. Mm-hmm. And it, it, I I love the combat of two and three. I think it's it's perfect as is, but. I don't know. One just feels like a slog to go through, and oh yeah, uh, it's you're playing a digital Dungeons and Dragons in space. Yeah, it's <laughs> all rolling the dice. You know, for it's all it's your weird to, to specifically <laughs> go on that. It I I can feel like the old uh, Bioware writing in it, where yes. I'm just like, this is literally a. Uh, a middle age fantasy novel, but it, that just happens to take a space. Like you could, you could take everything about this game and just take 
the sci-fi a- aspects and just put but in the middle ages i'm just like yeah, yeah this just screams like a D campaign and it's it, i, I kind of like it that you can see those see those uh strings there my uh also favorite part is just like some of the voice acting just doesn't work now it, like, it's really oh, my. Oh, yeah. there's like <laughs> my favorite and people point this out so um, it is my spoiler. My favorite is when you talk to Caden about his about his uh, backstory, and he's like, "Yeah, we were all experimented on as kids. We were all put through uh, mental torture, and all of us pretty died. But I just get my grades now." And your shepherd's like, "Good to know, Caden. Thank you." And I'm like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, "No." But he literally just said he's mentally tortured, most likely has PTSD, but he just gets migraines. And my shepherd's like, "Thanks for letting me know, Caden." And I'm like, "Shepherd what? had to go." So shepherd. <laughs> Well, like, and plus, it does. My pet peeve with games that let you choose dialogue options is when the dialogue option says one thing and your character says something else. Like, oh, God, where it's God. like, oh, I pick the very nice sounding. I only do it for you, Caden. And Shepard goes, I don't do it often. Thank you for asking. And I'm so, like, that's not what To be <laughs> fair, it still does it a lot better than L.A. Noir. There is some extreme stuff in there where you're telling, like, I mean, an old lady to go shove in the grass. <laughs> because I, because I think I'm sounding like a good person, and then my shepherd points a gun at someone, and I'm like, no. Oh! Um, <laughs> that's how I feel about talking to the space racist too. Because yeah. oh, don't name nu- her, I nu- hate her. Nuke the space racist. Oh yeah, every single time, <laughs> all the time. She killed my toad the first time I played back in 2007. I, I wasn't having that. <laughs> it's just like I get that that's like old dialogue choice design, but I think it also happens in two and three. And doesn't happen in Inquisition whatsoever, Dragon Age. So I feel like they learned from that, but at the same time, it's just like, this sucks! Like, I, I think I'm saying a nice thing, I think I'm flirting with this very hot space spaceman, and then I'm just like, I have to go, and I'm like, no! No, the, I, I'm totally with you. The Mass Effect trilogy has this weird disassociation problem with your main character, and that always felt so weird to me that you really are the shellless, motionless, empty avatar in Mass mm-hmm. Effect and things are just happening around you. Also, and you don't blink either. So that also Yeah, it's a little freaky. Right. As a um <laughs> as a quick little segue before I go to the to the other thing. Like I'm just playing Paragon, so I'm not choosing like any neutral or, or renegade options. But it, it is so weird. Like once you get um the space racist on your ship <laughs> I, I will not refer to the space racist by name. Good name. Uh, once good, you get good. once you get space racist on your ship, like I'm, I'm picking all the Paragon options, but like this is like it's planning like those early seeds of like flirting and romance. But every time you pick like a Paragon option with her, the game just just smash cuts to her face, just going from like this to. <laughs> oh dear God! You're right. <laughs> I wasn't looking at the camera, so I didn't see whatever Jose just did. <laughs> It, it, it's so obvious what they're doing i'm just like and it happens like three times in the same discussion i'm just like oh no at least no at least with Hayden, he gets like adorably awkward when it's like do you do this to all your servicemen shepherd and i'm like only you and he goes i uh i need time to process this and i'm just like no time <laughs> but oh um but, but for the point i wanted to go into um I, I meant to do a freaking video essay on this fucking a million years ago um it is very good for its time, but it, it definitely shows its flaws as, as as um as it ages. I do not like the morality system of uh, Mass Effect, where if if you're trying to, I don't even want to say like min max. If, if you're trying to um get conversations and whatnot, like you have to be either Paragon or Renegade. There's like no middle ground. Yeah. So yep. so you you lose a lot of nuance of like how do I want to approach this situation? Maybe I need to be neutral. Maybe I need to be a bit more aggressive. Like it's just like no that does not exist. You need to play Paragon. So this these are your dialogue choices. So they're effectively not choices. And and it's funny because in Mass Effect 3 they take out every single neutral option. You cannot be neutral. It's mm-hmm. just like one or the other, and like they they kind of drop the facade of it. Like you can't be neutral in Mass Effect One and Two, but you won't be getting the ability to do uh, Paragon and Renegade actions that you would be otherwise. So it's kind of also weird. what the first Mass Effect does that I've noticed. I recently did this in a quest actually, is the shortcut through quests are hidden between Paragon and Renegade choices, so you can't be. N- n- neutral 
if if you want to like find like quick easy ways to get through some missions like i just did a quest last night i'll be really vague on it where it was there was this whole other side quest that was actually related to it that um you would have never guessed was related to it but it was just a random dialogue option that you could pick and the guy was like oh if you bring me that that's illegal bring it to me and we'll do the right we'll like follow the right paper paperwork and stuff and seeing as i'm Par- paragon i went that's illegal so i brought it to him and he was like, oh, you need access to this one place story-wise, right? Here's really easy access as, as a thank you for doing this. And I was like, so if I hadn't have done this, I would have had to get there the hard way. Instead mm-hmm. of just being given what I needed for doing this other side quest that was completely optional and not re- related to this. So it's like, and plus the the Paragon option was giving it to him. So it, it it's like, I would have never guessed that those two things were related unless i had picked like a a neutral dialogue option where he said oh this this character asked you to do this that's legal bring that to me that's not supposed to happen like it was completely out of out of the way if i had just been speeding through the like dialogue choices i would have never figured that out and had to get to this area the hard way so it it's it's so hidden behind stuff that it's like like I get people want to speed through this to like get to get to Mass Effect Two, but it's kind of hard to speed through it if you need to do side quests to actually. Like... I can't even. I can't even begin to tell you. Like, ah, uh, shit. I forgot. I did a tweet freaking forever ago. But so I love the Mass Effect series. I like Mass Effect One. I fucking love Mass Effect Two, and so like I I've, I've played this series like to fucking death. I've played. I've and by say played i mean like finish like full playthroughs i've played mass effect one eight times i've done mass effect two like 22 times and then three i've done like 17 times i i have played these games to fucking death and i'm still very tempted to just skip on right on over to two but um i guess maybe even just put a cap on it um if you if you want to lead out the last thoughts on it uh blaine any general thoughts on mass effect or even specifically the um Legendary Collection. How come they gave Liara like an elastic jumpsuit to make her titties look twice as big as they are? That's the only thing I have to say about anything. We we were talking about it. Uh, I don't remember where we were talking about, it, but but do you remember when uh, the fucking typical um, anti censorship crowd came out when like they, they took away like some of the Miranda ass shots? They're like, you're yeah. ruining like the original game's vision, and then they give fucking Liara bigger titties, and then they're just like completely silent because obviously they're fucking hypocrites. Exactly. It's, they know who dumb. they're pandering to. <laughs> oh, yes, they do. And I'll just leave it at that. Yep. Um. Shit, I'm sorry. Did you have any other thoughts, Blaine? No. Like I said in chat, I've literally just been sitting here playing Monopoly since we started talking about it. Capitalist pig. I can't believe you. It's a simulator. And it's not good. But for some reason, <laughs> I still like it. Um... I don't think anyone has anyone here played Pokemon Snap. I know Corey has, but he's not here, at least verbally. I, I've tried to play it, but my kids and my partner uh, keep preventing me from playing that. Do, do they not keep, like Pokemon? No, they keep stealing it away from me. <laughs> well, it uh, looks yeah. fun. <laughs> yeah, I played the original. Can't wait to uh, jump into the new one, but my backlog's already fucked up, so. We'll see how that goes. Uh, 